Hey everybody, today is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on coronavirus. A few days ago, my partner got back from an international trip. They're a little bit sick. We called Kaiser and they said, you know, just to be totally safe, the two of you should probably stay home, do this self-quarantine thing for the next two weeks. So here I am uh, and, and I'm happy about it. I'm happy to, happy to contribute. The reason is, you know, I, I look out for my own my own health, but I also think about the health of uh, the more vulnerable people around me, people that are uh, with compromised immune systems, people that are uh, over 60 uh, are really vulnerable to this. And if I catch it, then that means that I can't, I can't help people, I can't be around those people. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's reason enough for me to take this, you know, these, these actions that have been that have been recommended. I even heard today that uh, there's been two cases of community spread in San Francisco. Uh, if you're not familiar with that term, what it means is that there's two people that are really sick with this uh, COVID-19 virus and they don't know where they got it from. Uh, there's plenty of people where they've tracked it, you know, they were in China or they were in Italy, they were you know near somebody. But for these two people, they just, they just don't know. And what, to me, what that means is that if we had the ability to be better at testing, if that DNA uh, molecular diagnostics, I think the story would be quite different. Uh, the reason I say that is I, in a previous life, I was uh, working on DNA molecular diagnostics as part of a company called OpenPCR. We were working to democratize these DNA tests that are basically taking, um, taking a, a sample, uh, in the case of uh, a virus, to be taking like a, a blood sample and looking at the DNA of it to figure out what's in there. So it's a very accurate test. Um, it's a very powerful test. And we were working on taking a 10 to $50,000 machine and turning it into something that you could, you could build or you could buy for you know, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. Um, it's really important for, you know, that, that sort of monitoring and testing is really important. And that's why it's been so challenging for me to watch the, the, the struggle that the, 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 the world and especially the United States have gone through in terms of, in terms of testing. Uh, the CDC has apparently been very restrictive with access to these tests. Um, and also, it sounds like some of the tests went out that were, that were completely broken. That is, uh, you know, totally unacceptable to me. And now that I hear about these community spread cases in San Francisco, uh, to me, it just means it's this, this sort of kind of mess that's really hard to contain. Um, so that's, that's kind of my, my knowledge on the, the PCR side. But then firsthand, uh, you know, we, we obviously attempted to, to get the test from my partner. Uh, and Kaiser has said, you know, these, like the tests aren't available. We don't have enough tests in order to test somebody who, you know, for what it's worth that, you know, it's probably, probably worth testing. Um, so what, you know, what does that, what does that mean? To me, it, it really means that, you know, in terms of, in terms of testing from a, from PCR standpoint, things seem like they're not working. And then I also see that, um, firsthand. So that makes me think of, you know, all the, all the panic and, and denial and all this sort of stuff that you're hearing from, you know, from, from people around you, from yourself, from on TV. It reminds me of what's happening with the climate, right? Denial and panic and people freaking out or people doing nothing. Um, and I think that's, that's something that I've found uh, really consistent in, in my career is when I see panic and, and denial, I look for opportunities for action. Uh, you know, when I was first getting into, into DNA devices and I saw these things were inaccessible, I said, great, let's go out and figure out how to take this technology and make it for one tenth of the cost and make it accessible to 10 times as many people. Um, I see the same thing in, in climate. Uh, how can we take action on the climate? That's, uh, you know, that's the mission of, of all of my work in, in climate, including the negative bracelet. People are frustrated. People are in denial. People are uh, panicked and freaked out understandably about the changing climate. But in the face of, of fear, we can, we can take action. We can, uh, we can in, create new things. We can create new solutions. We can find new jobs or encourage other people who are working on solutions. There's plenty of room in the face of, of, of this sort of fear and panic to take really powerful action that's, that's, um, that can, can put all of your skills to use. Um, so overall to me that, you know, the opportunity with, with this, with this COVID-19 virus is that it, it shows us that the, you know, the foundations underpinning our abilities for molecular diagnostics are, are kind of busted and we have the opportunity to, to build better ones, 
Same thing with the changing climate, right? Our ability to, to monitor, control, engineer, and change the climate those are things we're gonna learn how to do. We're gonna build better technologies to do that. Uh, and I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, so uh, let me know how, you know, the last the video last week was about climate action um, and, and what sparked your climate action. And I'd love to hear from you. Is this, you know, is are you seeing for yourself uh, a, a new connection to the changing climate in terms of what you're seeing around you because of the, the coronavirus? Um, yeah, hit me up in the comments and I look forward to hearing from you.